Welcome to the Ronin Night Watch here on Ronin Radio. Here, of course, with my host Bobby. Yep, I got a haircut too, so I'm I'm all Ronin ready now. <laughs> oh, he's going he's going hardcore for the Ronin style here, and as well as our co-host, special guest co-host Vert with this sweet hat. Is this a custom hat, bud? Yeah, man, I just made it today. Look at that. This is how creative Vert is, and this is why I love having him on the show. Thank you so much for joining us, the co-host, <laughs> and, and model. So he makes it, he creates it, and he models it. Uh, hey. we, need, we need to get that QR code down below oh, so you can order this stuff. This is great stuff. <laughs> exactly. Super excited today because, again, we have two amazing uh, guests, and they're bringing really cool perspectives because there's so much, again, going on with Oni Force, and this is why we're here on Ronin Radio to bring you some of these these details that, 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 that come in. And again, like this week, it's like, we could just do a whole nother show on just the details that came in this week on, on, on Oni Force. And so, uh, but we wanted to, to, to get down and give us some prep for San Diego Comic-Con. San Diego Comic-Con is the big show. It's the, uh, uh the Super Bowl of, 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 of Comic-Cons and with good reason. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit, uh, with, uh, Valerie who is coordinating, uh, the after party and has, she, I love, I love having Valerie. I love, I love chat, chatting Valerie because she will be unabashedly dropping alpha, like all over. Like she'd be like, Oh yeah. Star Lordy told me this. And I, yeah, I, like, like, I was like, go bring it, bring it. I'm like here's like what we're kind of planning. I was like, all right, everybody here, you gotta <laughs> like, have, you know, sneak peek. So glad to have her. She will give the sneak peeks and we love her for it. Um, and then we're going to be talking to uh Kush square who is an anime director and also recently named as an advisor to Oni Force to, I, I, I assume, help Oni Force, uh, you know, achieve that, uh, that golden, you know, uh, a trophy of, of having uh, an anime. And so let me bring on Valerie because she's just, she's just waiting to give us alpha. <laughs> Valerie, welcome to the show. Hello. How's everyone doing? So good. So good. Uh, founder. Uh, the San Diego NFT, uh, what is it? San Diego NFT Friends. Mm -hmm. And yep. how long has that group been going? We've been going uh, for a little over two months now, or two months, two years. I uh, started back in May of 2021. And um, yes, I founded the community. And basically, I just wanted to connect with people who are in Web3. And at the time, um, I, I started my journey like holding a V Friends NFT. So at first the community was called San Diego V Friends. Um, but as the community grew and we grew on different social media platforms, everyone was like, well, I don't hold the V Friends. It's out of my price range, but I still want to come. And I was like, yeah, I want this to be open to everyone. So then we switched over to San Diego NFT Friends. But if you want to sit next to me, you have to have a V Friend. I get that. <laughs> No, 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 of course not. Um, even if you don't hold any NFTs, we provide a lot of education. So we hold meetups um, every single month, at least one. There's times where we'll hold up to three if we're really enthusiastic. But um, now we've started having panel discussions around AI, um, around licensing with NFTs, uh, virtual reality and AR. So and it's you've been, been doing this for two months. years, but you recently found a venue that makes so much sense for you guys to host uh, the upcoming Oni Force uh, after party. H how did you come across this and what is it that you found? <laughs> yeah, th this is super exciting. So, you know, I'm reaching out to different venues like nightclubs and, you know, rooftops. And um, one day I was just scrolling on my Instagram and, you know, one of those promoted tweets or not tweets, but posts on Instagram popped up and it was for a museum called Wonder Museum. Now, they're not related to Wonder Spaces. A lot of people think they are. They're their own thing. Um, but I saw that they have like a lot of um, displays, like digital displays and interactive kind of art exhibitions. And so I was like, you know, what the heck? I'm just going to reach out to them. I saw they were located in the heart of downtown Gas Lamp in San Diego. So reached out to them and the event manager her she's wonderful her name is Skylar she was like oh my gosh I had to read your email like three times because like for the past couple of weeks I've been reaching out to all of the comic-con vendors seeing if anyone wants to partner and of course all the other comic-con vendors are either don't respond or they're already doing it like their own after party so that's how I landed the partnership because we aligned on that intersection of like art and technology now, is there a specific reason to be celebrating 
Only four. Absolutely. Yes. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, this is the second time uh, that Oni Force has been asked back to Comic-Con. They are the first NFT project has been asked back to Comic-Con. And of course, they're going to be dropping their comic book. So those are very, very two big things. Um, and if you know, or you're deep in the community, you've seen the sneak peeks and they yeah. are superb. Now, just like the one photo that star lord -y, kind of like posted one panel of there's like more and it's oh i cannot wait to get my hands on them yeah i can't wait to see them either and uh you know i've never been inside comic-con before and you know art snitch was like hey you know we've we've got someone on the inside and maybe can bring you and keegan in so i'm like okay you know they're rolling with the big dogs now <laughs> very solid this is this is the thing is you know we we we've been building this this team and i and i think i know the person that you know can bring you in and and that's the thing is like you know another only advisor somebody who's been brought onto the team and this team has been growing by leaps and bounds recently since star lordy got clear of uh and sort of like almost you know mission uh, a license to kill in a sense with uh you know finding these people these great great uh team members that were everyone seems to be part of the only community and so let's bring on kush square because he was added to this team and Let's find out the genesis of, 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 of his history with Oni. Welcome, Kush. Hey, guys. Uh, morning. Hey. Good yeah. to be here. Like so. I said, it, it's, you know, you've been in the community. You've been around. It's like, it's like, it's like, I know you. You've been doing this great work. You, you did Tanuki verse, which I thought was such a clever, you know, attempt to try to, like, you know, bring uh, the, the more awareness, this really great raccoon with, like, you know, huge testicles. Uh, but, but it's very commonplace and it's very almost, you know, traditional in its, in its lore uh, within Japan. Um, but how does it that you found Oni Force and, 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 and Star Lori? Um, so we, to be honest, I think Oni Force was the first ever NFT project that I came across. Um, so it was in 2020, 2021, when I was actually started to venture into NFTs and Web3. Uh, as an anime creator, I was already in Japan working with anime shows. Um, as an anime creator, like a Gingaman that we call in Japanese, right? the keyframe animator and the concept designer. Mm -hmm. designer. So I was working with a lot of anime shows. Um, I was having a good amount of fun, but then the idea of not having the freedom to be able to express what you want to do was something which was already kind of popping up at the back of my mind, right? Sure. And I think Web3 was something which paved the way for the creators to be, like, I call it, like, enable the creators to become entrepreneurs or, like, artpreneurs, right? Absolutely. So that's when I think my journey for NFT started. And uh, I think because this anime freaky guy, I... I was just looking for anime NFTs in 2021 and there's something like beautiful picture pops up right in my face. Mm -hmm. um, three colors, uh, you know, like the red, green and uh, yellow. And there's something called, uh, it says zero and one, but it's Oni because I know Oni. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah. What the heck is this? <laughs> and, uh, that was where I was like, oh, God, I need to get my hands onto this. And that's when I started to dive more into it. I saw I'm complex. And I was like, oh my God, this this is some crazy collection. This is something crazy. And like, I, I just need to do anything by hook or crook to get into it. And that was my um, twist or encounter with Oni Force in 2021. And uh, I mean, uh, it, it took me a good amount of time to become a holder, at least a year or so. And then... then yeah, it, was, it, was, it was 2021 up here. You're like, oh yeah, I love this. At 15th, yeah. I'm going to wait this out. I'm going to wait it out. <laughs> right, right. I mean, uh, that's when I think uh, last year, uh, late last year, I was able to buy in. And then when, um, you know, the Oli team, I just saw with one of the friends that I, I have in Japan. And I was sort of off uh, the Discord and because I was already building and you don't really have time to be active anywhere else. So I saw a post that Oni is in Japan and then uh, I saw Star Lord is here and Hired was here. So I just went and because I had done a lot of uh, uh, fan artwork on Oni before. And I am complex. Remembered me because of that. Uh, he oh, wow. he knew me by, by the art of it, uh, by my art. So I went there and I said hi. And then uh, they they asked me what I'm doing, and I told uh, I'm complex. That, yeah, we have chatted before. And then like, who are you? And then I showed that to like, oh, you are that guy. And that's where things started. <laughs> and uh, I think Hired had seen my work as well. And then because I had also done a lot of uh, fan art for Sun Sound. And only force. Oh yes. So uh, a lot of people because uh, these I mean I had just before I met them I had met Kaku who was here as well. Kaku, so, Kaku, like people, he, he was like he's like, do you know how much experience Kush has? And I was like, I had no idea. You, you were so into anime. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, I met Chico and Thaku, and then they told me, "Oh shit, dude, you need to." And then I was fortunate enough to get a sun cap myself, and then hang out with them. And then when the only team came over, I like, "Oh god!" And Star Lord, he did not know me before, but when he saw the experience and the kind of things I was doing, he's like, uh, "I mean," and because I think I'm that foreigner guy who actually made it to Japan in the anime industry and speaks Japanese fluently. Mm-hmm. So um, with the entire culture and like how i mean let's just be honest japanese are way too insular to be able to let anyone outside uh, from outside to imbibe in their culture and uh, i mean i was just there as a fan of the project i mean i didn't i was not there for any kind of transactional value that i wanted to have like you know i'll going to do this if this happens so i was like no let's just do this let's just help you out whatever way possible it's just like a i mean seeing you flourish would be just like a, a really good moment for me So that's when I met Charlotte and the team and I show them around Japan I show them the culture I introduce mm-hmm. them to some people like you know Kush we love you and If you don't follow Kush Square follow Kush Square now on, on Twitter <laughs> because he actually does go to like all these cultural sites in Japan and he takes these beautiful photography of it you know, yeah. I love when your stuff posted up it's great Thank you thank you right now in just the bottom of Mount Fuji mm-hmm. and uh, I've just come here to make a deal seal a deal with a brewery that I'm we are working with so yeah A brewery? Yeah. What? Is this Alpha? Is this only Alpha, or is this just you? You need to drink. You drink that much. You need a brewery. Uh, I, I I'll not spill any beans yet, but let's see. <laughs> oh, I like that. He knows how to play this game. Let's go. <laughs> Valerie would have told us the name of the beer and and how much alcohol percentage by now. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> But so you have you have this uh, this as you said you you sort of broken an interesting um, barrier in within anime and become part of the process of of creation of anime you you seem to have stepped away from it but can you give us a, an overview of perhaps your vision for how it is you see Oni Force as an anime or or what steps you might take to bring that closer to reality So to be honest uh, definitely Oni Force belongs to the the best of the best franchises which actually develop into the world of anime and manga and comics and or all the other things toys and mm-hmm. i think uh, with every project i think the artist or the creator is the product right mm-hmm. so what are we seeing in oni force right now is an extension of i am complex right so uh, the way he designs things the the characteristics of his lines the usage of colors and the entire vibes the background is something that imbibes all together the oni force and uh, in japan Ma- anime is a derivative of the manga right mm-hmm. so the first the manga and the comics are the the base of everything like if you want mm-hmm. to expand an ip if you want to expand a story the manga or the comic has to be the first thing mm-hmm. out there because it's relatively more scalable mm-hmm. and it also mm-hmm. enables you to reach the right audience who would let you decide you know yeah i am into your, uh, your story i'd like to see it more and uh, but we we have seen like oni has a huge amount of traction all over the world so that that level of uh, the bar or like validation has already been crossed over right it's not yeah. that we need to have that validation so when uh, the team came over we ha- still had and we still are having some talks on because the team is bullish in japan of, on japan and they really want to put a firm step in japan so one thing that the fee that oni has achieved till now with all the anime and nft projects uh, blue chip nft projects out there in the world i think only force has been the first one to be able to say proudly you know we have a presence in japan more than anyone else mm-hmm. because uh, and it is also kudos to star lordy and hired and uh, you know i'm complex because they made sure that they come to japan and meet the community and everyone so uh, with uh, the kind of vision that i have for only force uh, expanding in japan is uh, so there is something called niji so saku in japan right in japanese that means a derivative artwork Hmm. So a derivative artwork is a kind of a methodology to expand the IP where you actually inculcate different artists and they make the design of your characters in their style right because what happens is that uh, you know if you have uh, Okazaki san coming over and drawing one of the only characters he has a following of uh, 2 million himself right 5 million himself so at least 10% of those followers would kind of want to venture into oh, what what is this character i want to see this So I think that's one of the ways, uh, and the other way is kind of being like Pokemon did, like spending all of um, I mean that's 150 billion dollar franchise, right? But they had to kind of pull in the venture money and then splash the money and then kind of take at least five years to be breaking even, you know? Mm, so that's that's the kind of uh, aspect. Uh, I mean, understanding the way the business works all over the world, IPs and uh, like uh, 
technical businesses are very different things ip is a content creation which might or which might not i mean kind of reap the value out of the way you are spending it even the anime movies that we see and anime shows we see there is a high probability like only 5% or 3% of them make profits right mm. I mean, uh, we have seen some other projects even announcing we are going to anime. I'm like, okay, like, well done. I mean, but to <laughs> what kind? How are you going to monetize it? Because anime does not make you money, money, right? And uh, being done that, having worked on like plethora of anime shows myself and worked with so many anime studios, um, I've seen that. But we want to inculcate a kind of a model which actually enables the IP to because only easier to stay for for throughout the generations. It's not going to be like a three three year five year thing. so with the team and us we are kind of trying to look for the right partners and it it has to be a marriage made in heaven you cannot just go and say oh you know i want to make this anime the studio it's, has it's a marriage it, it really is a marriage that you're trying to align for because there's value systems and there's execution there's a lot of styles there's so many things and you know if you get along because this is something you have to do long term yep it's also because in japan the anime studio is known by the kind of style they actually stick to for example um with oni if you go and talk to uh let's say studio ghibli they're like i'm um, i'm sorry we don't touch this style right? it's mm. not us mm. and uh, you know that's the thing and if uh, a word travels around that you know you have been talking to some other anime studio and japan is so small the word travels around very fast like if mm. you have just been to one or two studios it travels around yeah. oh there's the ip speaking to them there's only so, so many yeah studios, so yep so you have to be very particular who are you talking to and uh, like uh, i mean in the world information is wealth so keep the information to yourself and then try to reach out to the people in the right way i think uh, but yeah having said that uh, i think stellar is going to probably come this month again i i'm sadly not here i'm leaving to india for two months and i'll be back but uh, yeah i mean uh, we we have been kind of developing and concocting a plan so how we see pony actually uh, expand into the japanese uh, diaspora and then see uh, you know to have uh, like i would say to bring back the roots of oni back to japan right because oni mm-hmm. oni is a is a character of the yokai that's a, by tanuki and oni are actually cousins in the yokai mm-hmm. yep. so that was like a fun fun concept all together that we were actually exploring and uh, yep uh, with with my presence here and being that japanese speaking gaijin uh, i'm i'm trying to uh, you know be be uh, the bridge and help the team out as much as possible uh, not just the uh design aspect of things or like just planning aspect of things but also t- trying to seal some good deals which actually enables ip to say you know like we we did this we have done that since you see the landscape of, of as you said of yokai and then you know specific to that yokai the oni subsection have there been other properties that are are similar in any way because that was my 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 sort of thing as well is like i came into you know oni i'm like oh my gosh fantastic you guys are you know doing this uh uh you know this this lore that i know so well i know you okay very well and I, okay you guys are going to do the oni fantastic and the temper and all these sort of things and the qualities but has this been done before um i would say the way oni has been designed and i think the way it has been um, you know being worked upon is pretty unique from where i see so there's this another big project that i have not called the name of just recently launched their another collection and you know the floor went down and they will they like you know i mean i have nothing against them but the problem that i really felt as a creator was they just did a rip off of something which is already existing web 2 before right the storyline the characters and everything so um, that's what where was i mean i i i do like the project as well their project as well the way they actually pursue themselves but the problem was when you just try to uh, copy paste something and just try to it's okay to take one the page from the playbook but if you just try to replicate it with without having your own creativity coming into place i mean it's not really going to be a full amount of fun and so there is this another uh, like uh, web to, web series from uh, uh, mamuru san the coach in the shell director that i'm watching he says that when you're creating mm-hmm. something it's never new it, you never creates in any part of the world if you're a musician if you're an artist if you're an author it's nothing new it's a, a memory a library uh, our mind has a library of memories and we just take a book a page from there right so it, you have to be i mean uh, like good artists copy but great artists build onto that right and build so, exactly expand yeah, yeah. yep so uh, i have not seen something like oni being able to though there had been a perception and i'll just be very honest you know like gundam is a very big 
you can see some kind of influences uh, with the Gundam because I'm completely a huge fan of Gundam as well. 100%. So in when 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 I met the a lot of different uh, studio producers and everyone they were like yo this is something like Gundam. I said uh, I mean definitely there has been inspirations from Gundam but it doesn't mean that we are going to copy the storyline or we are going to you know or the characters have there can be inspirations from that but uh, who doesn't like uh, there are so many different franchises uh, who have been um, you know in Japan mecha is a huge huge thing so in my opinion the way oni is actually building and uh, kind of the, it's it's also mostly about the community guys i mean the 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 proof is uh, exhibit a the five people present in the call today i mean mm-hmm. uh, look at look at the amazing cap the world has right and the, the i mean i i look him posting some content over the twitter and i'm like oh my god this is this is like brilliant amazing you know this guy goes out of the way does things for the people and because he's bullish on the community he's bullish on the project i've seen bobby doing things all together having his own podcast and you know being out there vocal in the community itself in the discord itself so i think uh, it's also uh, i think what oni is enabling right now which no other project has been able to is enable the individual to build their ip whatever the character they hold right so i think that is something uh, i see very very prominent uh, going along in the mind of stalordi and there's some big alphas coming all of your ways um all the way from japan as well i'm sure word might be into uh, some of them as well but yeah um you know uh, stalordi is i mean uh, the one thing about stalordi is uh, that guy knows web3 that guy knows shit how to do, to you know 100% pull some ropes. yep and uh, like a really, yep and really humble yeah. guy really he listens to you he's there for you and uh, uh, i mean he doesn't uh, sit around uh, you know like that guy's crazy he works all the time i'm like uh, when he was here um, even if when we were going he was multitasking in the, in the meeting and then he was talking to someone else as well and yeah i mean um, i and, think but that, it's a great point you're saying you know that uh, you know star lordy opening up the aspect of web3 that allows for creation amongst the community and that's that is as you said the most powerful thing because you can scale in so many great different ways um so okay so how about this so between the four or five of us we probably got maybe we'll say 20 characters we own the rights to those characters <clears throat> so our our steps would be to a make a, a manga together to establish, you know, what the story is going to be and uh how long do we have? Do, like do you know, can we get away with like a one shot or or do we have to do like a series and then have it published or do you or do you take it and pitch it to the studio? What is the process like? So I think uh, depending on the characters that you want to build, I think it can be an anthology story as well. There's a genre of manga called gekiga which is more driven about how the anthology stories are driven. uh mm-hmm. but uh, you know what happens is once you have your uh, you do not have to do an entire comic you just have to do a pilot the pilot could be at least 20 pages i would say mm-hmm. right so if you want to really make things happen and you want it to go to a anime side of things what you do is you have to do two things is that you need to have your story base set and tell them what kind of world the story belongs to and mm-hmm. why does every character exist by the virtue of them being there right like why is the character you necessary so those the the basic script of the entire comic or the plot what you want to do then a uh, basic character designs um, not just the panels just the character designs of what kind of art is what kind of art style what are the references um you know and uh, like why are you choosing to be this genre if at all like if so you to so you bring together the script you you bring together also an artist yes. into that meeting and 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 you you go to the studio and say hey i want to make this into a manga Yeah, uh, definitely. So what you do is you actually give them why do you want to work with them? Like, what mm-hmm. is it for them? I mean, like there is like two eight hundred anime, thousand anime studios in Japan. Why do you want to work with these guys, right? Mm-hmm. So because uh, that 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 thing that you have to actually win over is uh, more than what do you want to do? Um, why should they make it for you? So that's something that you have to kind of tell them. Uh, I think those and if those lines are done upon, then you know the commercials are discussed. Like what are the because. for an anime show of 12 episodes to come out it takes at least 2.5 years of time so if you go and decide okay i'm going if you close the deal by august 2023 your anime would come out in uh by the De- december 2025 so that's the amount of time that requires and the budget goes into like at least uh, i think 3 to 5 million dollars for making a anime show of 12 episodes long and uh, yeah even as small as 1 30 30 seconds would take you at least 30 to 50 thousand dollars easily 
mm-hmm. uh, or maybe hundred thousand dollars. I mean, uh, yeah. So because I think uh, what what we are also trying to do in Web three um, in with uh, Only Force as well, we are just not trying to build an IP. We are trying to enable the creators as well, right? Um, not to uh, just be like people just to give them bragging rights, but to be able to add monetary value to the creators and mm-hmm. holders, like. um salary is deploying a artist fund right now for the community mm-hmm. and things like that so that is something where a lot of uh, you know cross communication is happening and because in japan if you are working and me having worked 5 years i still do some freelance work for some anime shows um but what happens that the money never reaches me uh, well off like i like make i was making like a really pennies uh, you know I'd like drawing one scene there were days when i was starting i would make 300 dollars a month and my rent was 650 dollars a month so mm-hmm. uh my mm-hmm. entire earnings were 2 dollars a day for like 12 hour, working 12 hours a day so that was the reality of anime that is the reality of anime mm-hmm. uh but uh, if back there you should you survive you find your way somehow and yep yeah, i'm here with some of my missing three, yeah 3 million dollars for the 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 season but uh 6 600 to you so <laughs> like you know and so there's there's a big chain there and there's a big uh, machination and I, we're very lucky to have you uh, you know on, on the the team as an advisor to give us that perspective because it is different this sounds you know there's similarities you know in the hollywood system but certainly there is a difference and the differentiation is the culture is the way in which you know processes are approved and so uh i want to open it up to 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 valerie and vert and bobby if if you guys had any other questions uh for kush i don't i mean i appreciate a lot of this insight as i mean i'm not a creator an artist um obviously not in the anime world so to kind of hear kind of what goes on behind the scenes and the process from being the anime creator to getting your show out um is very insightful and something that I feel like I'm going to be more mindful of too now going forward. Um it's not just okay, yeah, you have great IP just cuz you have great IP doesn't mean you can just get a show just like that it seems like. <laughs> that that stuff is quite difficult. I I actually because we were going to be speaking with you Kush today, I pulled out one of these series I really like. It's called Pokémon. Um You obviously know it. It's a great series about basically two kids who want to be manga and anime creators, and uh, it follows their story from like middle school to like out of college and everything they went through to to get to where they end up. Um, and I don't want to ruin the story. It's very like slice of life. Um, do you like that story? Have you read that? Um, it's by the same author and artist as Death Note, so it's. I know it's pretty popular. Uh I have not read the complete story but I have read one one or two volumes somewhere in between. It was also way back I read this uh when I was I think some some I don't remember when but it was way back when I used to um like fun fact guys I don't watch or read anime anymore uh, or watch watch manga mm-hmm. anime anymore. I just make it but I I make sense. Yeah yeah. There, there goes the last question that I had for everybody. I'm like, what are you watching? What are you reading? Yeah, yeah. None of it, none of it, and that's okay. I think that's the thing is like, you know, there's, 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 there's something about the culture in which this is why I'm, I'm here as well. Like, you know, it's just like there's a lot of interesting competition, right? You know, when it comes to the, the the type of work that we do, and sometimes it's not as fun as we thought. It's not the pure enjoyment of of it, and there's something about Web three that gives us a glimpse at. the enjoyment process of it and i think i sense that from you i mean yeah it's just like i would just sip it uh say it simply is like it's if you work in mcdonald's you not want to eat burgers anymore right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's how you know goes. how the meat is made you're like no thank you <laughs> <laughs> so yep that's how it goes amazing well uh thank you again so much kush uh, for joining us for did you have any last words you know what yeah i just want i Do you know Osamu I don't know if I'm butchering this name but Osamu Tezuka Oh Tezuka-san sensei is yeah of course yeah Yeah so um he he actually made a uh, a film uh when he uh was I guess he was the uh head of Mushi Pro or Mushi Production mm-hmm. and uh when I was a kid like there was an anime anywhere uh but I had cable and on cable they would play like this uh Jack and the Beanstalk um mm-hmm. anime that basically took me from my 
like Western way of seeing things as, as cartoons, you know, like where it was like all well, Saturday morning. And like, I think we had like as Dungeons and Dragons was probably like my favorite at that time. But um, once I saw like that animation and it just triggered something in me where I just fell in love with anime at that moment because it was the, yeah. the sounds were different. Like, you know, when they look and you hear like the sword shimmer or something and you're like, the intensity was way up higher compared to what I was used to. Yeah. And it just drew me in. And to this day, I'm always trying to stack up that intensity more and more in my creativity because I feel like it invokes so much emotion. So, I mean, my question for you is, you know, as far as like the pleasure of creating in the anime field, do you still get that? Do you still strive for that with your team? Um, because that's something that really drives me in, in creativity. And I, I look forward to like doing, you know, using that type of passion with, with our community. Uh, that's a very good question, Word. Thanks for that. And uh, I've also seen Bean and the, uh, sorry, Jack and the Beanstalk, uh, 1974 <laughs> by Osamu Tezuka-sensei. Uh, it's a brilliant yeah. anime show, uh, the, the version of it and the characters, how they were eating or the backgrounds, the, the propping up. It was amazing. And so Tezuka Sensei was the guy, Sensei means teacher. So when you actually talk about uh, Osamu Tezuka, you actually have to put Sensei because as far as he's no more and people actually refer to him as the Sensei, the godfather of, um, you know, the anime industry. Because what Disney is to the America um, and the uh, Tezuka Sensei was to Japan, so he actually pioneered anime here, mm -hmm. right? So, um, yes, uh, I think in particular for an artist, uh, as an artist, as a creator, you're always driven by passion and uh, um, the sign that you want to create something which sort of is an extension of yourself, right? Um, so every time you actually want to create something, there's always a... Con this, this was a debate or like kind of discussion I also had with I'm Complex, you know? Um, as an artist, you cannot be politically correct all the time. There's some sense of spirituality or some sense of, um, you know, emotional essence of you as an individual that goes into creativity, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, for any artist, probably, so one thing I think it might be with you as well, you're never satisfied with what you create. You're always like, ah, I could have done better, you know. <laughs> I mean, oh, I yeah. Could have done better. yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, I think there's this something where you actually uh, call like the work is finished, uh, which is not actually finished, finished, but you have to, you know, deliver, you have to think of it like, you know, um, I could work on this for my rest of my life, but then would I want to is one of the things, you know. Um, so I think uh, definitely with the idea when you have a blank canvas and when you have like, you know, I have a pencil, I have a blank canvas, I can create anything. It could be any, any anything in the world, you know, it, be, it could be from a dot to a spiral to a whole new character in itself. And uh, definitely what we do is uh, we actually take a reference from all over the world and driven by the fact that, you know, I want to draw that character. I would want to draw that particular pose and I would want to strike it a balance with, you know, in, in a way that this scene is going to be, uh, you know, big with an explosion or it has to have some kind of vibe which is rusty or like bloodshed or something like that. Um, and then you look up all the different artists, how they take their, uh, um, how they actually design these kind of perspectives and uh, scenes altogether. So the passion of trying to achieve that, uh, you know, th that's something which is untangible in terms of creativity is, which is always driving an artist to actually explore. And uh, mm -hmm. the fact that once, if you become more transactional that, uh, you know, I'd only want to do this if I get this much amount of money or if I get this kind of favors or if, oh, let's say I'll, I want to become an anime artist because I want to have 10,000 followers on social media. Let's just say any kind of transactional value to it. You actually, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, no disrespect or offense to any other people who want to work on that. But the fact that if you take, because creativity is something you are actually trying to document time, you know. Uh, artists, musicians, we are trying to document time around us. Like, for example, if you look at the paintings uh, or like movies, which are 100 years, like if you see uh, movies from like 100 years ago, the directors who are making those movies are actually documenting their world around them. You know, if there was a patriarchy or if there was more like uh, when you see uh, Francis Ford Coppola's movie, he, you can see like, you know, the kind of vibe, the kind of colors he used with the, the, the all the movies. The, the themes the of the day, the themes that surrounded the actual time that it was filmed, yes. Yeah. So we are always driven by the society and an aspect of society gets imbibed into the creativity or whatever you create, right? Um, for example, tomorrow uh, Valerie goes out and says, you know, I want to build this kind of character. 
that character would definitely have some kind of influence from her friends from her personal life maybe a dog or maybe a you know things around that and she'd be like Diego vibe for sure yep countries <laughs> yep <laughs> and every 10 20 years when you look back in time you'll be able to realize where you were in that particular position when you're drawing or creating that you know that's how it happens when i draw something and i look back 10 years later oh this was the exact point i was thinking of mm. what i was thinking when i drew this and uh, one thing is that because the way you think as an artist your lines would actually take shape so this mm. is saying because it's more about uh, if uh, because i was in tibet as well for 6 months and i was in turn interning in a monastery i was learning a painting thangka painting wow. uh, so in there you have to sit straight and you have to have the control over your breath and you have to draw like this all the time because the way you breathe that's the way the lines would coming on the paper hmm. that's the entire aspect mm-hmm. right? so it's a, it goes into understanding and me and uh, i am complex had discussion of you know uh, different methods of controlling the breath while drawing and so wow. we used to and shalwadi and other were like what the heck are these guys talking <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. hippies you artists <laughs> we used to go all the way in and talk these things and then talk of you know different virtues of uh, passion anger love of how the character actually takes because every character in oni is a part of i'm complex somewhere right like uh, mm-hmm. this character is his anger this character is his love this character is hate mm-hmm. so i think uh, definitely that kind of idea of to be able to bring out uh, every aspect of you like we i i say it openly every artist has multiple personality disorder so mm-hmm. i think that kind of uh, you know uh, you the, the, have the to just to protect you from the process because you have to keep <laughs> grinding and then it's, it's you have to change okay oh that you didn't like that well uh, let me let me do something else yes yes and i think yeah that's that's how uh, creativity is always going to drive you forward but yeah one thing is that uh, i i see this always uh, art is expression but design is communication so mm-hmm. you have to be able to communicate to the audience and you have to know who you do not need to have like 1 million fans all the world you have 1000 core fans just do it for them but then you have to communicate with them because they have to feel the part of the process they have to feel like you know what you are doing is uh, they are feeling or having some kind of scene along with you so i think that's some of the things uh, what we are also trying to do with oni ourselves all the people that, that are involved in the call today and with web3 enabling all of this Exactly. And that's why we're here is we're, we're here to commune and, 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 and learn from each other and develop with each other, collaborate. And I appreciate you, you know, again, your, your vibe and your, uh, your openness throughout the process. You know, we, we talked about like our history together with Son, et cetera. You've always been that guy to want to bring together collaboration, to, to want to bring, in, bring to their community and to have you uh, as part of this project, leading part of this project is very exciting. So thank you so much for your time. And we're going to invite you back at some point, man. As soon as as soon as stuff gets heats up, you're going to you're going to drop some alpha from Japan. We're going to have you right back on the show, friend. Definitely, definitely. I look forward to coming to the states uh, next year. I have, I'm the youngest child in my family. I have two brothers who live in the states since 15 years, so they're like, "Dude, come already." So I like I'll be there next year and probably meeting all of you guys. Nice. Perfect. Uh, Let's go. Love it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kush. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, Kush. How rad is Kush, oh. right? He's so cool. I, I mean, I, I walked on stage, but that was, I just felt like I just got a knowledge bomb. Dude, it's like, he's, he's such a smart yeah. dude, so, but, you know, so very humble. And, you know, to to think that he was at a Buddhist monastery for six months did not, you know, I was like, yeah, probably. Because, like, you know, if you've, if you've ever communicated with him, he's just so very, like, calm, but very, very, very highly creative and well in tune mm-hmm. with his instrument uh, as an artist. And so... uh really great to to spend this time with him and and hear um all the while just anticipating Valerie's alpha drops I'm just like it was like oh Valerie's thinking of stuff to tell us I know she's thinking of stuff to tell us but before you do <clears throat> have you uh, uh, I'll, I'll go to I'll go to Vert and Bobby first and Valerie I don't know if you have one but uh, you you're free to join in on this uh, section of the show uh what have what have you been reading or watching that you love so the thing that I I just wanted to Shout out Bakuman again. So I've read the whole series. There's 20 books to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like about 160 chapters or so, which is like many years of work because all of these like usually shown in manga is a chapter a week. So that's a lot of work. Um, got turned into an anime. It's more of a slice of life. So it's like very much, it's not like all action and battle and, demons and stuff it's just like real life but like a real story um and i've just been kind of i finished uh 
I finished Full Metal Alchemist mm -hmm. Brotherhood. And so I was like, I need something more chill and like just laid back. Um, so I've been enjoying that, uh, actually watching it now because I read it. Uh, I finished it earlier this year. So really been enjoying that. Amazing. Thank you for that. Vert? Yeah, I've really just been uh, researching Osama Tezuka. So and kind of going down his uh, avenue of art and uh, just kind of just studying his life more um, and what made him tick. So, uh, you know, he, he definitely reached through the long barrier of cultures to, to reach into my child heart back in the day. And as I was kind of researching my first anime and I came upon him, I was like, oh, this guy is like the father of manga, too. So he wrote, you know, and did art and comics. Uh, so, you know, I've been working on looking at his stuff, you know, he did, he was the first out, you know, creator of Astro Boy. So um, wow. it's That's a it, long gestating property at the studio that I've been <laughs> at firsthand uh, as, when I was an assistant uh, working on it. Just one of those great ones that they just can't translate with the, with, with, you know, the, the irony that, you know, that, it, that is present in that story of, you know, the, the relationship to the, the creator. Yeah, it's I think it's really uh, like in sync with what we're going through now with AI. It's like this whole question of what's real, what's not, what's humanity, what's not humanity. And um, I, I think we're always like kind of wondering that. And at, at one time, this was like, you know, just in the comics and in our movies. But now it's kind of like moving into our reality. So, so yeah, I think uh, I've just been noodling on that whole dynamic. And uh, yeah, checking out all of his uh, his uh, older stories and, and a lot of his art. Because, you know, the, like he like started that whole look of, you know, the, whole, the huge eyes with the like pouty type of face and and the emotion behind the face in characterism that you find in anime. Like he was really essential to that. So. So, yeah, I've just been geeking out on that. Geeking out's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're going to hear from Val. Val, what have you what have you been in? Uh, have you have been watching or, or reading anything interesting? That you love? No. no, and I was just thinking today, I was at the store and there were some books and I was like, you know, I haven't read for so many years. Like as a child, I had like bookshelves of books and I would really, really, I mean, I could spend hours just reading a book and probably finish a pretty big book in a day. Like that's how big of a, a reader I used to be. And, you know, being in Web3 sometimes, I mean, at least for me, I'm in it full time and Twitter and community building takes a lot of my time. So I haven't really found that balance, but I've, it's been calling to me to get back. Well, that's what this show is for, Valerie. We want to we want to recommend uh, you know the the, the breadth of, of, of uh, you know all the different choices that we look at each week. Uh, this week I have a very interesting one. Black Paradox is another one that just uh, became available in English, and it is from the master uh, Junji Ito. Junji Ito is known for his classic horror Uzumaki. Uzumaki yeah. is yeah. The, the the spirals, if you know what I'm talking about, this fucking spirals exist. I know I read that story. It is crazy. Still this creeps me out. This is a new one. This is a new he, I think he had done it quite a few years ago, but it's the first time it's available in English. So uh oh, check it out. Um, uh, Black Paradox is now available. Um, so this three-time Eisner Award winners, uh, uh, you know, it's just, and, and this is, again, uh, you know, I, I kind of focus more on things that are a bit more one-shot for me, honestly, because of the time. I don't have the time to to, to really go through, and, and, and then I'm, all of a sudden I'm collecting, like, you know, an entire bookshelf. You don't have time to read 20, like, of these? Exactly, like, right? Oh, it's just, like, it's so tough uh, uh, for, for me as, you know, as a as working parent, and it's, it's uh, just to be able to enjoy these is, is really satisfying mm -hmm. because... Uh, a master like this bringing together a concept of uh, uh, this group here of four that meet together uh, to fulfill a pact of a group suicide. And so it starts off just so random, like, hey, how's it going? Hey, yeah, it's you. It's me. Great. Fantastic. And so they go on this thing where they're just going to, you know, this, do this pact that they're going to do a suicide together. And they start sharing each reason, like, you know, why? Like one is has anxiety another has, you know, disfigurement. And like another one is just like, angry and so the fourth though is absolutely hilarious it's this um this guy with the lighter hair p10 <laughs> or by dan he has actually been replaced and i love this for this time he's been replaced by ai 
And it's so crazy. <laughs> it's just like, he's just like, it's like, he's like the AI is more, is, is better than him. And he's just like, and he's really depressed about it. It's just like the AI has, has full, it's like, it's just like, it looks better than him. If, you know, it, it speaks better. It's, it and so he's just like, he feels replaced and he's, he's, you know, uh, not needed anymore um, in society and in life. And so he's super depressed about it. Um, but that's just a great setup that leads us down a really, Junji Ito esque, uh, and if you know that's uh, Uzumaki, you know that it's going to get twisted and really effing weird and fantastic. Wait, why is he naked there? I see. Him that's like his, I was that's like, his AI. I was like, I know why he's mad. That's his AI. Yes, <laughs> well, that's his AI. And if his AI is banging like that, and that's embarrassing you, you know you got problems. So yeah, he's got some, some some real you know bad stuff going on, and uh, mm -hmm. each of them do, and they're all connected in this uh, very, very Junji <laughs> Ito way. Uh, so check it out. Uh, Black Paradox, uh, now available in English uh, as of, you know, just this past year. So um, that's that's what I've been loving this week. And um, it's cool, Minty. Always enjoy hanging out with you guys talking oh, about it. It's crazy. Things. It's like, it, it's, it's you know, it's it's him, but it's just like, it's, it's so engrossing. Ito's like style is very very it's very rough and it's just but it's so relatable because the characterizations and then like the really grotesque shit like he gets the the grotesqueness of humanity that makes it very interesting um and enthralling to watch and, and, and sort of flip through um but before we end valerie is going to end with uh just the biggest alpha drop ever i'm kidding but like you know what's our experience going to be for comic-con because this might be the last time we you before comic-con so we're going to show up at this at this this event this this venue and the Wonder Museum that you've mentioned. So yeah. it's at 8 p.m., right? You uh, have to, 6, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Doors open 6 p.m. Yep. Doors open at 6 p.m. You have to get your, like, how do I join? If I'm in Oni and I'm like, I'm just hearing about this now, like, how do I join? Yeah. So we haven't really publicly put it out there. I've just kind of re reached out to anyone I've seen as like, oh, I'm going to be at Comic-Con. Um, but for now, please DM me. You see my handle there at vdizzle777. DM me or you can DM um, our community account, San Diego NFT Friends. Um, and I will send you a private link to our guest list. Um, so we have a very limited guest list because otherwise you'll have to go to the Wonder Museum website, which is WNDRmuseum.com. And you can get general tickets. General tickets, I think, are going to run between like $30 to $50, depending if you want general or like VIP tickets. But if you are in the Web3 community, and of course, if you're part of our Oni family, um, we definitely want to get you in for free and we're going to have a separate line for nft um holders which is always fun to incorporate some of that web3 stuff and i think it will i think it'll be a statement you know I, this is a open you know event for anyone to come and enjoy if they have a ticket so i think it's going to be a good mix of people who know nothing about web3 maybe nothing about oni either um and getting to see a community here of, of, of fans and listen we're going to have um, a panel discussion with um, Star Lordy and then a guest speaker. Um, we're trying, we're working real hard to see if we can get Paul Jenkins himself. You know, he did the comic book writing for the origin story for Wolverine and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, so we'll see. Um, but we'll definitely have as well as the as well as the Oni Force comic, right? He also did the polish for the oh, yes. That was really cool to see um, Paul Jenkins' name on there. I am Complex and uh, uh, Josh Blaylock on, on that with the comic with the Comic Con symbol on there. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, the event is going to go six to eleven. And so if you DM me, um, I can share with you like what our ticket looks like. So um, let me show you, have, you here. You have the floor. <laughs> so this year is kind of what it's going to look like. It's just uh, we try to do some Oni color branding, has like banner. And those Onis that are featured are mine and Keegan. So that was really fun to like put in our own IP into it. And then if you go and this is available for like Apple or Google Wallet, this this is called D-Pass. And this is actually one of my companies that I'm a part of. Um, but it gives you like, you know, a summary of what the event's about. If you scroll all the way down, you'll also see links to our sponsors. So I'm excited to announce that we have 
Avagachi as one of our sponsors. They're the biggest um, like pixel group uh, or pixel NFT on Polygon. So they're going to be there. They're going to uh, share a table with their partner called VoiceMe. VoiceMe is a Web2 platform and um, basically is similar to Webtoon where they help with like IP. And I think uh, they're going to drop their own comic as well in the next couple of months. So VoiceMe is helping right. with them. And I also heard from their team that they're working with Pudgy Penguins as well. So Pudgy is mm -hmm. going to be dropping something with them, mm -hmm. too. So that's that's some little insider there, info there. Um, Valerie never disappoints. Always <laughs> bringing a little bit of, what have I heard? What else have you heard, Valerie? <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing some stuff. <laughs> um, and then we're also excited to announce, um, who am I missing? Nifty Kit, Nifty Kit, they're based here in San Diego. There are no code solution for smart contracts. So if you're an artist mm -hmm. or looking to drop an NFT collection, uh, definitely check out Nifty Kit. Uh, they've got some awesome tools and an awesome team over there. So they're going to be one of our sponsors. Um, Privatize, which is the company that I'm working with that did the tickets that I'm showing you. Um, they also are one of our sponsors. And I feel like, oh, Crypto and Goons. Crypto and Goons oh, nice. is also one of our sponsors as well. They're going to yeah. do a pop-up um, at our place. And they're already doing um, a pop-up um, at a store called Off Off the Block, if I'm not mistaken. It's Off the Something. It's also a, a, it's a shoe shop in San Diego. They're, they're going to have a, a pop-up there and then also come over to us and do a little something with us. Okay, this so. excites me in a lot of ways because Crypto and Goons, to me, literally is, they may be the best, and I put that against anybody here, best at apparel. They, their mm -hmm. team has been doing it for many years beforehand, and every time I come to an event, they have designed something specifically for that event with materials and in a way that you can't just go to uh, uh, you know any, any place on, on, online and get it. This is something totally. that you have to have a relationship with vendors and you have to tell them exactly how it's done. And you have an amazing artist. Their artist is so fantastic. Are they thinking of doing an Oni collab piece? Because if they're, I'm going to be like the first dude there and I'm not lying. If there's going to be an Oni collab piece, I'm going to be the first dude in line. I can't <laughs> say. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what they do, you know? So I'll make it happen. <laughs> I'll, I'll spread the word i'll let them know that the, you know i don't know maybe they might already be thinking of doing something you know i wouldn't put it past them. best best hats in the game um except for verts verts is also killing it today yeah <laughs> right um and then you know we've got some of keegan's onis up there he's too let's go Represent keegan thank you keegan for assisting us uh, for, for six, assisting valerie today <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, something cool I wanted to show you guys. Here's a little bit more alpha. It's not Bring it. official, official just yet. I'm going to share my screen real quick if I can. That's okay. This show is totally unofficial. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, I got to press this button. Okay. This I'm also liking the, the fact that Avagachi is part of this. Avagachi, I've been hearing a lot about. I think it's a good team. I have a lot of mutual friends, apparently. It's okay. Let's pull this up here. Uh, wait. Oh, this is okay. a little bit of the museum. So there's going to be some fun interactive stuff. Um, so this is actually called the Immersive uh, Theater. And you guys can see my screen, right? Yep. We see it. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, so we're actually going to do something custom in this room. It will be related to Oni. I'm not going to say what, but, uh, you guys will get to experience, uh, a world with an Oni horse in here. Ooh. So that's going to oh. be fun. What's that? Sounds dope. Yeah, it's going to be real fun. They use mapping projection and the artist who's going to help us do that um, also uses AI. And it's funny because he was just like a floor manager to begin with, with the museum. And he did like this one off event for, and it was like a DJ who wanted like anime, like Tokyo Drift kind of feel. And he created something. They loved it so much that now like he's been going to all the other wonder museums in Seattle, Chicago, Boston, like doing custom stuff. So I'm really excited to have him and see what he puts together. And so cool. he's, he, and we also converted him to an Oni fan. He's read through like Ooh. the whole lore and everything and he wants the comic book. So yeah, he's, he's turned into a full fledged fan. <laughs> Looking to see what his interpretation is going to be. 
And then here is a little inside of um, what the process is like behind the ticket that I showed you guys. So I'm showing you this because I've talked with Star Lordy. Like I said, it's not super official yet. No contracts or anything have been signed, but Star Lordy himself has seen the ticket. But this is what it looks like in the back end. And we would love to use this for the Oni World model. So this is going to be something like for you, Bobby, who has your own meetup with Oni Force uh, community. And so this gives the community the power to create their own custom tickets continue to use your IP, like how, you know, Keegan and I put our IP on there. Um, and so basically you can click and make, you know, you could see how many people have claimed the ticket with Apple wallet, Google wallet, you can design it, you know, include different fields, event name, different links. So if you get sponsors for your meetups, you can add that. Um, and, you know, you have the Google uh, wallet version and the Apple wallet. And then um, I won't go into, well, I can go into tickets. So you'll see, you can have people sign up with an email who don't have a wallet yet, or you can connect with wallet. You can see all the ones that have been claimed. I won't click this. If I click attendees, you'll see everyone's emails. So I'm not going to dox them. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And then this would be verifier. So if you want to verify, there, we have a device that people can just go and tap their phone because it's NFC enabled and you'll be verified. And then this is where you can come and customize, you know, the event description, what time does it start? Um, and then you can also mint more tickets. So for example, if I get, you know, fill up 60 out of 60 passes, I can go ahead, add a couple more and just create more. So you can mint as exactly. you go. So that was Amazing. some little and I think this is you. Let's thank you for that. And I think it's really cool because you're, you're also mentioning something that, you know, we're going to cover in more detail. Uh, perhaps we'll have Archnich on to who is who's leading the Oni world um, phase of, of development. And, you know, for those who, who don't know what that is, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, people like like Valerie, like Bobby. Uh, Vert, maybe you're going to have to start the New York version of it. <laughs> but like, you know, basically having and developing Oni communities uh, throughout the world that are localized that have regular meetups or, you know, just uh, occasions to meet up. And, uh, you know, you look at somebody like Valerie, who's, who's doing it professionally and has all these great and amazing tools that go with it. Uh, it's very exciting to see because thank you, Valerie, because you're, you're, you're leveraging and, and, and lending, not just, you know, uh, your expertise, but all this great tech behind it. That's really going to, I think, uh, help people feel appreciated uh, as they attend these and feel more closely tied to, to the community um technologically as well which is you know it's so web3 of course i want like i want a pope and i want like you know <laughs> something even doper if i can so this sounds super oh rad. yeah let me share because i forgot when you get the and you know when you get the pass it yep. mints the nft in the back so i want to show you guys uh the the nft that gets minted all right you're gonna have there it is there Created oh, by our lovely Bobby San. So Dude, Bobby what? This Bobby, artwork. that's you? Yep. <laughs> this Dude, is that's yeah, I did this is great. <laughs> it's so awesome, me? right? Uh, just, um, he did some little really well. Bobby, you holding out on me. Look at all this great <laughs> art you're doing. You kidding me? That looks great. I, I just did this like last week and then um, they were like, do you want to, like, because we were talking and I was like, I could maybe throw something together. They're like, you sure? And I was like, yeah, I, I can throw something together. And yeah. um, after talking and everything, I was like, all right, does this work? And they're like, this is awesome. So totally. definitely uh, love it too. No, totally. <laughs> and we're so grateful to Bobby um, for, you know, producing this as fast as he did. You know, I don't like to rush the creative, you know, process for artists or anyone, but uh, Bobby was able to whip this up pretty fast. And I think in like half a week, I want to say, like he didn't even take a whole week to do this. It was like half a week. Nope. And uh, given how really fast this guy puts on uh, Oni Force uh, uh, hoodies on the people. I, I can, I get that. Yeah. He's, 
He's an amazing artist. And it was just so cool that he also imagined the Onis as these young kids. I don't think I've really seen that. And within the community, at least anyone do kind of like the younger version of what an Oni may look like. So I also really love that, like this fun, you know, imaginative, excited young kid. You know, the feeling you get, right? When you're reading yeah. comics or, That's or exactly something what like that. Was we were talking about this. You were like, this is cool. I was like, yeah, I was trying to like encapsulate that feeling of reading a comic when you're a kid and like it kind of feels I've got a little bit of that feeling with now Oni Force launching their own physical comic so very exciting totally physical so yeah coming. is there any alpha there like I know that there's the, the Hunter X but I feel like there's always been talk of another comic book does anybody else get a sense that something else is dropping there is another there is another it's it star has mentioned it Right. And some ups, um, it will be following unknown characters that have been created uh, by I'm Complex. So I, I don't know too much about what they're actually going to do in terms of story or anything. I think they've cut that under wraps. Um, mm -hmm. And it follows seven characters. And I don't know if they'll introduce them all at once or whatnot, but. Okay, if anybody has alpha on this, hit me down in the comment section below. We're going to bring you on the show next time. <laughs> We're going to get to the bottom of this. Or we might just find out at Comic-Con, guys. It's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, the event is uh, July 20th, correct? Yep, the event is Thursday, July 20th. I know Oni's going to be in town the day before. I think it's like the preview for all of the vendors and everything. But we'll be there Um July 20th through 23rd. And if you come down, please let me know. Even if it's not on the day of our after party on Thursday, um, I'll give you some more alpha. So for anyone who has our pass in their wallet, you get access um, to the other events that we're throwing. So uh, we're joining Crypto Goons and we're going to have a pool party. So there's going to be a nice. pool party on Friday. Thank you for telling me because now I need to bring a swimsuit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be bringing a swimsuit. But first, I'm bring a swimsuit, bring some sunscreen and a towel. Uh, it's gonna be good time good vibes and uh yeah we have telegram group that we're trying to get everyone into who's like in the web3 nft space so nice. it's a good place to like network with some of the other communities that are going to be there so we're gonna have cool cats who's in town uh crypto goons pudgy penguins avagachi oni force um so it's and i've i think Forgotten Runes. I've had heard some stuff. Maybe it's They're just always the there. I, I literally, okay, here's my story of Forgotten Runes. Forgotten Runes, I was there last year and I was just like, I was just popping into to a couple events. I didn't do like sort of the, the, the main event this year because it was still quasi COVID to be honest. And so I was just like, I don't want to be in the hall. And so, but I'm like walking outside because outside pavilion, there's a gajillion people. I'm walking outside. There's a dude in the sun in, in the San Diego heat of like 80 degrees and like he's got a big hood on. And he's just like, and he's holding one little comic book out for passersby. Nobody's trying to, to talk to this guy because he looks so creepy and he has this big hood on and he's holding one little comic book out for somebody to come by and, and, and like grab it from him because you get a lot of them. There's so many people who are like, oh, here, like, you know, here's comics for, for, for Jesus or something. And you're like, oh, wow, cool. Like, you know, these, these, you know, these different, you know, styles of comic books. And there's one guy, big hood, standing there. And just like in the middle, and I was just like, I was like, are you okay, dude? Like, do you need some water or something? And he's like shaking and sweating. And he's like, no, no, do you want this comic book? And I was like, yeah, man, thanks. I took it. It's the Forgotten Runes comic book. Nice. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I was maybe the, the only person that day to get it. I felt so bad for this guy. <laughs> and he's just like, he's just holding out this one comic book. Um, but it was very, very interesting to, to see their marketing tactics. But it, it made so much sense. I was just like, of course, it's Forgotten Runes. Very totally cool. yeah so excited to see everyone who's going to come down and also the people who are going to be exposed to this you know intersection of art and technology and how you know this can change the industry too of of comics or add to that right having more of an immersive experience possibly you know owning this nft and you get to license it out and put it you know in a comic and build out your ip so really exciting stuff. And I'm excited to see the reactions of people who don't know anything about it. See, you guys, and this is part of why I wanted to bring on Kush. Did you hear? Like, it's just like, guys, we have the rights. We have all our characters. We just get a manga together, guys. We just get the 30 <laughs> pages of it and we go bring it to Kush. We're going to have an anime. Let's go. He said, he said, all you need is 280 pages for at least a basic, like, 10 episode series. So get to writing, yeah. everybody. <laughs> There you go. And then hire, hire Bobby and, and Bert to be your artists and you're done. 
Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Always a pleasure, uh, my fellow Ronins. Uh, another great one. I don't know if I'll see you before Comic-Con, but I hopefully uh, will see you at Comic-Con. And um, obviously there's going to be a lot of stuff going down there. And so reach out to Valerie for uh, you know uh, the, the situation there, yes. IRL. Totally. Let me just say one more thing. If you're not yep. going to be at Comic-Con, we are going to live stream the panel that we're going to have with Star Lordy. So um, okay. we have the link. We'll put it out and everything for anyone who wants to tune in. Um, and the Discord, so that way the, you can the, the only Discord probably? Yeah, we'll probably put it out there. So just stay tuned, working with um, Art Snitch and Star Lordy. You know, they want to do things right always. So take some time, but definitely keep a lookout. All right, guys. Well, we'll tell our all, all our local Enclave members. Make sure they can tune in. 100. Perfect. Thank you, guys.